Okay, Tram Doctor's in the middle of another project. Um, picked up this BLJ 500 for a good price. Um, the guy was saying how much the tubes are worth, so it had um, 520 LF6s in it, one driving four. And he wanted a lot of money for it because of the tubes. And I said, well, how much um, without the tubes? So he sold it to me without the tubes for a song and a dance. And uh, it was full of dust, so we cleaned it up and didn't really find any information on the net about the uh, BLJ amp. So kind of went through it, took it apart, cleaned it up. This is the um, main circuit board out of it with the tubes. Got tubes mounted on a circuit board fan too and uh, it's got two transform well actually three T the two big transformers there and the one small one there and how this work is it's basically a grounded grid amplifier just like any other like maybe a Palomar 300A but uh, one of the things is these two transformers are high voltage only there are no filament voltages coming out of them at all uh, just a high voltage one and they're in series um, so I'm assuming they're about you know 250 volts something like that each and both of them in series to put about 500 AC which would be about seven eight hundred plate um, but of course we haven't uh, ran it to confirm that but we did some tracing and they are in series and then that little low voltage transformer there only runs the low voltage circuitry uh, you know the uh, preamp and the key in circuit that's all that little low voltage goes to that's why it's so small so um, how it ran the filaments are it had 520 LF6 tubes and it ran them off the mains it ran them to five tubes filament voltages in series and what's 5 times 20? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100? But it connected them directly to the uh, AC mains. So it's kind of a dangerous amp to do that. I don't like running anything directly uh, uh, to the main AC. And another reason I got it so cheap is because the um, original owner said that um, he had hooked it up to his nice rebuilt Tram D201A he had and he hooked it up and, and operated it and it blew it out and he was thinking well maybe you know the Tram went out so he had a, a 2990 I think he said he was um, and he hooked that up with it afterwards because he thought it might have been the Tram that went out and not the um, amp taking it out and then the uh, this amp took that out too so we went through it and everything, and um, we didn't see any shorts or obvious, but I bet that he had a tube filament short, and it ran that uh, filament, you know, coming off the mains into the output, or well, actually the input, and ran that into the tram and, and the uh, RCI and took it out. Anyway, I do have a question if anybody knows. Um, you know, we reverse engineered it and... Um, made a, a handwritten um, schematic there of it but this one question I have is I see this this is an on off switch here Let's see if we can turn it around a little bit on the circuit board off on and that goes to the cathode circuit to the driver if you see it on the schematic I put it right there that's the driver tube and what that does is changes the uh, input watts going into the tube. Um, that's the input coming in, you know, to the driver tube. And this is basically the ground for the tube. And uh, with that switch off, you would have that resistor in line, so it would take a higher drive. And with that switch on, it's grounding the uh, cathode directly through that choke to keep the RF off of it. So anyway I know what that switch does it changes the um, drive level that you can drive it with but I wonder if anybody has information as to what drive level I would assume with the switch on it would be um, you know regular radio drive you know three four watts 
But with it off, I'm not quite sure, you know, what you can drive it with. You know, is it 10 watts? Is it, you know, uh, uh, 50? So I'm wondering if anybody has information on um, or a manual on that on-off switch on the board that goes to the um, the driver to affect the RF coming in. Uh, another thing I found interesting as opposed to the um, filaments being in series is it doesn't have any bias or anything um, to cut off the tubes so what it does is it uses a high voltage relay on both the windings of the main transformer here's a schematic I made this is the uh, two high voltage transformers in series and then it goes to um, a relay actually the same relay as the um, antenna in and out and that could you know short too and uh, cause you to blow out your radio so it might be the relay too but anyway it switches both the windings on that relay you know uh, for the AC coming into a full way bridge rectifier and that's your filter caps 3 in series here actually do I got that board laying around I got the board out I should have been a little more prepared oh here it go This is the high voltage board, you know, for this same thing. You know, your three filter caps been changed and your um, eight diodes for the bridge. It uses two in each leg. So it's a full way bridge, which we like. It uses some heavy bleeders, uh, 27K um, across each cap, which is pretty heavy. Um, it'll bleed it down fast. I don't know why they went that heavy. Um, I don't know if you need to bleed it down in 15 seconds or what the purpose of that is, why they went heavy, but that's what it is. But another question for the experts out there, I think I know the answer, but just kind of confirming for an expert, do you really need to switch both legs of the um, high voltage? Uh, can you just switch one, which is what Palomar and, and all that do, but most Palomars use a voltage doubler, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I'm just curious. So my two questions are, um, do you actually need to switch both legs at a high voltage transformer? And again, about that um, on off switch on the input. You know, this thing's coming along pretty good. We've um, rewired the filaments, um, put them all in parallel, and we're going to run a, a six volt filament transformer yet to be done uh, to take those um, filament voltages off the mains and other than that um, we're put, starting to put her back together got her all cleaned up and uh, a pretty good looking app after we got it cleaned up and uh, hopefully we'll get it going soon but um, again not too much different than a regular uh, grounded grid amp two high voltage transformers low voltage transformer that is the uh, key and circuit and uh, preamp board here and that's the low voltage um, power supply for that um, low voltage transformer there and all it runs is the um, preamp and key in circuit board over there and it's got three relays in it you know uh, one's to key everything up the one at the bottom and then a preamp relay in the middle and then your antenna relay and your high voltage relay in one is that top one. I'll probably change that around too. Gonna be a little work. It's, you know, tune and load, basic stuff, you know, other than what we already mentioned. Um, not as involved as I thought it would be. Interesting though, putting tubes on a on a board, but um, I think it'll be a decent ant once we get going. Anyway, that's it for this one. Um, hope to have it finished and all that up and running. Coming soon. Bye.